AI image and video just keeps leveling up. And today we've got a look at Luma Labs Dream Machines image to video. And I gotta say, with this update, Luma might have taken the top spot for AI image to video, well, at least for this week. You guys know how this goes. Google's Image N3 has also made a pretty big jump. You can now in-paint on it. So that Google is clearly making a swing at being the best free AI image generator around. We're also gonna pop in on Pika's new feature additions, and I've got a look at an upcoming model that might be a real game changer for VFX compositing. Uh, yeah, think in-painting, but with video. It's pretty wild. Kicking off, Luma Labs have updated their new Ray 2 model with image to video. And despite a few limitations, in my opinion, this might be the best image to video model like currently available. Like again, for this week. At the rate everything's going by the time I finish this video, we might be on like Kling version 4.2 and Minimax generating in full VR. We'll be taking a look at some more community videos in just a bit, but first I wanted to showcase with like a quick demo that I put together. Sorry, I caught the end of Transformers 3 the other night, so my my brain is in full Bayham mode. If you haven't been over to Dream Machine in a while, everything is now kind of broken into project boards. I actually really like this. It really helps keep things organized. Um, so Battlefield Counterattack is our, yeah, our Bayham short. So as you can see here, we have our whole project kind of laid out uh, in a vertical and kind of horizontal uh, format. I'm really kind of coming around on this particular style that Dream Machine is going with. Although if you want, you can always come over to this button and get your generations kind of more in a standard library format. For our image generation, I actually did not utilize Luma's new image generator, but instead leaned on Midjourney. Uh, in particular, since I was trying to go with that Michael Bay style, I cribbed together a mood board of Bay and Bay adjacent shots, uh, just kind of hammering Midjourney home with like, this is kind of the look that I'm going for. I didn't provide it with a variety of images. So, you know, that said, Midjourney seemed to understand the assignment and more or less gave me what I was looking for. Like this in particular, that really looks like a Bay shot. So this was the first shot that I ran. And I'll Although there are a few hiccups in here, it was definitely very promising. Um, yeah, plenty of explosions, plenty of Michael Bayness going on here. Prompt-wise, I actually just re-ran the image prompt again. Um, and yeah, to note, even though the outputs are only at the five second mark, you will occasionally get uh, what I'm calling like the happy accidents. So like somewhere around the three second mark, we sort of switch into an entirely other shot. Um, that said, I think there's a lot of stuff that you can end up mining out of these little happy accidents. As with all video generators, you will of course end up having to do a number of re-rolls before you kind of find something that you end up liking. Um, a lot of times though, I end up sort of circling back to previous generations that I was like, I, you know, I just try, I like to push my luck. Outputs in Ray 2 can go up to 1080 to 4K. Uh, here's a shot that I actually did not end up using. Definitely a very Michelle Rodriguez inspired character. Um, the other limitation currently is that you cannot extend video. If you use the extend video, it'll kick you down to the 1.5 model. The thing that I'm really sort of enjoying is the more like this button where obviously you're going to get shots, you know, more like this. Uh, I tend to think that all it's really doing is changing the seed in the background and then rewriting the generation. Although, you know, if you if you press your luck a few times, you'll end up with some pretty cool shots. Oh, is everything gonna be 100% rock solid? Of course, not always. Uh, this was a shot that I thought was, it was kind of okay, but again, you know, pressing our luck with the more like this, I did end up with some pretty terrible outputs, like in this shot where this guy has clearly been taken over by whatever zombie virus the aliens have dropped on us. Now, two quick notes here. You can, of course, upload an image and just go completely promptless, uh, or you can utilize Luma's camera controls just by issuing the prompt camera. Uh, you'll have a number of options down here. I don't know why camera orbit isn't in here, but sometimes if you, yeah, there you go. So if you start typing orbit, you can get move camera right, orbit left and orbit right. The other thing to note, and I don't know if this is just a weird hiccup, but you're always gonna kind of wanna make sure that you're on Ray 2. It will occasionally slip over to Ray 1.6 for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Um, anyhow, for this shot, which of course is the you know Michael Bay parallaxing hero shot, um, this was one that actually slipped to the previous version of Ray. Now that said, uh, you know it works for this shot. Uh, this was just simply a prompt of orbit to the right. You could definitely 
get some pretty good camera motion and movement out of Ray 2. It might just require some post work and editing afterwards. Uh, for example, I really do like the first half of this shot and then the camera obviously pans over and then it kind of hallucinates our character running away. So that doesn't work. One thing that I would love to see from Luma beyond, you know, extend video is maybe something like Sora has with their timeline where I could issue a split or a cut here and then have the model regenerate sort of the back half of the clip. So while I think that Ray 2 can definitely get a bit wild, it's definitely a lot more contained and coherent than say Sora. Moving on to some community outputs, Christopher Fryant gives us uh, these outputs that are kind of like everything everywhere uh, inspired in my opinion, or just like uh, these ladies learning that they can fly. And that's the expression that I would have if I suddenly started flying as well. Um, in general, yeah, this is a really great output. Um, it really showcases how, like when we've seen this in the past, the backgrounds would tend to morph or decohere out a pretty good amount. Uh, it's staying very consistent here. Yeah, this looks really good. Bird showcases that the image to video model will definitely maintain stylistic consistency with these animation kind of anime-esque test shots here. Um, yeah, all of this stuff looks really good. Definitely, I mean, in my opinion, on par with any anime that I see on like, you know, Netflix. I mean, I know that there is a large portion of the audience that is always aiming for ultra realistic consistency, but in my opinion, uh, truly the secret power that we are going to see unlocked this year will be in AI animation. The model does seem to do a pretty good job with handling text in a video. Uh, this is from Jeff Synthesized. Uh, obviously we have Ray 2 probably in painted into the newspaper there. Um, but it, you know, the letters don't morph off as our guy closes his newspaper. Leo Espinoza gives us a pretty interesting test with the famous photo lunch atop a skyscraper. I still think these guys are an absolute lunatics. And running it through Ray 2, yeah, things get even more terrifying. Uh, by the way, all of these guys are absolute characters, but I mean, the fan favorite is of course the guy at the end there who is having the liquid lunch. Uh, he was recently identified as Gustav Popovich, who's actually killed at the end of World War II by a grenade, but the photograph was found in his estate with the note, don't you worry, my dear Mariska, as you can see, I am still with bottle. Pour one out tonight for Gustav, absolute unit. Moving on to the image side of things, uh, ImageN3 has been kind of making the rounds now. It's available over on Fall, Replicate, a number of other places. Uh, and of course, you still can use it over at ImageFX for free. Imagen 3 or Imagine 3, I'm not sure how we're saying it. Uh, yeah, it's really impressive in terms of its prompt coherence. Uh, this is a prompt that I actually cribbed from Fofer. And as we can see, the adherence is super solid. Uh, underwater photo of a dark haired woman. 90s bedroom, completely submersed in water. Uh, yeah, everything looks relatively 90s to me. Uh, we're picking up on jeans, black sweater, dark blue walls, bed, cheap furniture, plush red carpet, 80s laptop. That 100% does look like a Dell potato. Get a Dell, dude. It's even picking up on the wicker white table and haze coming in through the window. I'll also say it does very well with minimalist prompts. So just a samurai at magic hour gets us something like this. Now, I will say that in a previous generation here, we do end up with a bit of an abnormality here. Actually looking at it now, I'm not sure if it's an abnormality. Just, it does look like he's holding the katana very awkwardly here. Now this could be fixed via in painting, although, Imagen 3 did not have in painting well until now, but there is a weird catch. Checking in with our woman in a red dress, she apparently is out on a date with a man in a leather jacket. Clearly, she has given up waiting for our man in the blue business suit. Now, I did have to run this in a 1-1 square aspect ratio because for some reason, uh, that's the only aspect ratio that they're letting you do uh, image edits in. But if we come down to the edit button, yeah, we can now um, basically switch out what our guy is wearing here. I have the man wearing a yellow suit. We're gonna generate the edits here. And there we go. It definitely made some bold choices in terms of the yellow jacket, but hey, our guy is definitely dressing for success on this date. Now, of course, we are stuck with our edits in a one-one aspect ratio. Uh, it's a bizarre choice. I'm not sure why they went with that. Um, but I mean, clearly you can take this over to any other image editor and you know outpaint to whatever aspect ratio you need it to be. If you haven't checked it out, again, I recommend you swing by. I mean, it is totally free. So uh, link is down below. And I guess in somewhat related news, testing catalog has uh, broken a story that uh, images look like they'll be coming to the Sora platform. This actually does make some sense as presumably this is Dolly 4. Um, so, you know, you will be able to generate images essentially on the Sora platform 
as Dolly for maybe provide them as image references and then get really weird videos out of them. So get it together, Sora. I want to see a version two. Again, not a lot of details here beyond, you know, essentially a presumably leaked screenshot. Uh, so I'll keep an eye on this and let you know as it develops. Checking in on the Pika side of the street, they have recently introduced Pika Editions, which allows you to add a image into pre-existing video. There's definitely a lot of interesting use cases here. I haven't had a ton of time to play with it, but um, from the outputs that I have tried out, like taking this VO2 video and this mid-journey generated character and combining them together, we end up with this, which uh, you know looks pretty good. Another output equally as impressive. I do like the fact that there actually is wind consistency between the cape and her hair. Taking this VO2 generated shot of uh, an undercover informant not acting shady in an alley. And then adding a photo of myself in, uh, yeah, we now have me essentially comped in. And, you know, I didn't really prompt myself to do anything, but yeah, I'm there kind of like screwing things up, I guess. Now, as a note, I did try out our Viking turnaround and use that as an addition. And we ended up with this uh, as an output, which is I, it's just kind of funny. Like this dude on the right is just like, there's a Viking parade going on. This is really weird. So that definitely does not work. I haven't gotten a whole lot of time to play around with Pika editions. Luckily, friend of the channel, John Finger has. Uh, check this out. So I just want to see how it does with the person walking next to me. We'll see how that goes. Say hi. Yeah, uh, do a little walk around. Now that is super impressive, but it was actually in an earlier test that John did that uh, the model did something that really kind of blew me away. Here, check this out. Let's use Pika to bring in a digital extra, get a high five in. Let's see about bringing it in to uh, have a little creature here walking around. Um, oh, let's interact with the little creature. Boop. I don't know. We'll see what that does. The most insane part to me is how our like Icelandic cyberpunk woman here, uh, if you notice on the turn here, like she smiles and then raises her arm to, to give the high five. That's that's wild. So while additions definitely does work with your AI generated video, uh, I think the really interesting and fascinating use case here is going to be in the video to video arena. Moving on and sort of building off of that, Snap Research have unveiled their project. Uh, this basically allows you to compose and composite together two video sources uh, and then output one video. This That's nuts. As anyone who has done any kind of video compositing knows, I mean, you could take this bonfire shot and this beach shot and, you know, comp them together. What you can't do is, uh, like in this third example, have the waves come up and literally take out the fire uh, and then have it smoldering afterwards. That's crazy. Another example here, uh, 916 footage of a guy break dancing on a bridge because he's waiting for the boat to pass by, I guess. Uh, as we can see here, we can change and extend the background into 16.9. Uh, we can then change the clothes on the guy, uh, and then we can change the background and even add in rain. And then I guess in an ultimate flex, we can then go ahead and add all three of them together. Um, you know, I know I say like, that's crazy all the time, but I mean, in this case, that's crazy. They haven't fully released anything yet, but I do expect that they will be dropping something fairly soon. I don't think that this is going to end up being vaporware. Um, yeah, really looking forward to putting this one through its paces. So that's it for today. Today. I'll be back later this week with, I mean, I don't even know what I'll be back with. Who knows what tomorrow will bring. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.